Um, so I'm an environmental engineering major, um, and I'm double minoring in energy and economics. Um, and so I've always liked science. Um, I've always been really interested in how science works and specifically how environmental issues um, can be addressed with both the science and the policy side of things. Um, and I kind of grew up around it. So my dad's an environmental engineer for the state of Nevada back home. And so dinner conversations would be about climate change. They'd be about what he was writing for the mines um, that he was working with at the time. So I knew a lot of what an engineering career looked like growing up. I was kind of raised up in it. And then in high school, I got the opportunity to work with some engineers and some engineering students. Um, and that really gave me a good idea of what engineering was um, and what I wanted to do with it. Um, so I don't actually want to stay in engineering long term. Um, I want to go to graduate school for international affairs and um, policy and work on the environmental policy side of things and try to bridge that gap between the engineers solving practical problems and policymakers solving the policy problems. Um, and so engineering school was kind of one of those things that like it was just a given because I can't write a good policy or understand policies moving forward if I don't get the science and why they made the decisions they did. Um, and so getting this technical engineering training is really important for me moving forward. Um, so that was kind of what motivated me to go to engineering school. Um, Mines is its own kind of special <laughs> engineering school where it's all engineering all the time. So the Colorado School of Mines is kind of weird in that the majority of campuses are like fairly 50-50. Um, and even engineering schools within bigger campuses are like 60-40, which is obviously not ideal, but at least it's something, right? Like it's sort of progress towards like a more even ratio. Um, but at Mines, I think the average is... 30, 70. Um, so it's definitely something that you notice, I guess. Um, something that I found is that we we ladies like to stick together, um, and so we've kind of all bonded right away. So you'll find a lot of groups of people and groups of friends that are like very heavily um, like filled with women which I find awesome, but it's definitely, um, it's definitely pretty obvious when you're just walking through campus. Mm -hmm. Freshman year, it, like, I really almost didn't notice the ratio at all, because everybody's in the same classes, we're all taking Chem 1, we're all failing Chem 1, oh. um, you know, it's, you don't really notice it as much. Um, you kind of notice it when you're just walking through campus on, like, public pathways, because um, those are definitely, there's more men. Um, you tend to move out of the way more often. Um, but within the classes themselves, you don't really notice it. Um, now that I'm a sophomore, it's definitely um, more obvious as I get into higher level courses. A lot of the guys at this school have th a joke, and it's a running joke, and I heard it probably in the first couple weeks of being here, um, and it's about this thing that they call RIBS, um, and RIBS stands for Ratio Induced Bitch Syndrome, um, in that their argument is that because there's less women here, um, we generally get a little bit more attention from the male population. Um, and that because of that, we think that we're somehow better than everyone else and that we're hot shit. Um, and basically that like, it gives us this superiority complex because, well, because of the ratio, we have our pick of the men, I guess. That's something, that was the first time that I really was kind of slapped in the face by the gender imbalance 
Um, Because like I said, freshman year, right, you're just taking core classes. Um, But that was the first time where I was like, okay, um, so not only is this like a serious thing, um, but like it's very much a social thing. 